Okay, in the latest of our series of short videos looking to add key application to your revision notes, we're going to spend a few minutes thinking about countries with the lowest GDP per capita. Many of you will have studied development economics and uh, will often will have studied low-income countries. Uh, this is the data for 2020. Uh, these are the countries in the world with the lowest GDP per capita, according to data published by the uh, World Bank. And in 2020, Burundi reported the lowest per capita GDP ever, closely followed by South Sudan and Somalia. Um, clearly, all, all of these countries right at the bottom struggle really badly economically because of poor developed infrastructure, very low living standards and many other barriers to development. And notice, please, that all of these countries in 2020 had a per capita income in US dollars of less than $1,000. Yes, we can make a purchasing power parity adjustment, and that's often the case when we're measuring living standards and doing some cross-country comparisons. But these countries are the poorest countries in the world in economic terms. And of course, 2020 was a very important and difficult year for all nations, but particularly the least developed countries. Indeed, in 2020, because of the shock effects of the pandemic, uh, reverberating around the world, GDP per capita for many of the world's most poorest countries measured in dollars, and not PPP adjusted, but just measured in dollars per person, fell below 1,000. It was a year, 2020, uh, when progress, the progress we've made in reducing extreme poverty was halted and in many cases reversed. Look at this quote from the World Bank Poverty blog published in April 2022. 90% of countries posted a decline in real per capita GDP in 2020, more than any other year since 1900, including two world wars and the economic depression of the 1930s. So 2020 marked an incredibly crucial turning point in the progress made in reducing extreme poverty. The various ways of measuring the poverty line, the World Bank has three poverty measures, $1.90 per day, PPP, $3.20, and I think $5.10. Have a look at this chart. Lots of moving lines here, but look at the top of the chart. So it shows that uh, there was some progress in reducing poverty in sub-Saharan Africa, the line edging down towards about 40% 40, 40 of people living below $1.90. East Africa, poorer than West Africa. Huge progress in cutting extreme poverty in Southeast Asia, but an increase uh, in, um, in absolute poverty in, in the Middle East and uh, North African countries. If we look up to $5.50 a day, PPP, again, progress, uh, much slower progress in, in uh, South Asia and in East Africa and Sub-Saharan Africa. So in 2020, something like 85-90% of people in Sub-Saharan Africa living on less than $5.50 a day. So this progress in extreme poverty has been halted in many ways by the pandemic. And I think this little bit of this application video is just a moment, an opportunity, if you like, to remind uh, students through the revision process of some of the key causes of extreme poverty. Let me pick out a few for you. Fundamentally, of course, extreme poverty is caused by, by low productivity, low per capita GDP, and the fact that for millions of people, particularly small farm smallholders, farmers and things, they have a low and unstable household income, which prevents them saving in particular. Many of these countries are so poor, they can't afford to have a fiscal welfare safety net. And in many countries, of course, there's an absence of insurance and basic financial services. Uh, millions of people in these countries have access, poor access, limited access to basic public and more goods, such as state education and uh, public health care. Uh, these are countries where, although officially unemployment might be low in some nations, actually there's a lot of unemployment hidden and underemployment. So a lot of informality and often the, the, the unemployment data bears no relation to what, the, what is actually happening in the labour market. Many of these countries suffer from primary product dependency. They're dependent for their exports, their output, their investment, their jobs on just a few uh, low value added industries and uh, they don't have a diversified economic base. And of course, low incomes, low savings, uh, means there is a huge consequence in terms of health, one of which is the debilitating effect of malnutrition at development level. And I think the key thing in your A-levels and your IB preparation is to, is to just be really clear about some of the key barriers to 
development, some of the barriers, some of the hurdles you have to overcome to lift a country's per capita income and bring down extreme poverty. So many of these countries suffer from chronic infrastructure gaps, basic infrastructure, things like transport, telecoms, energy uh, and, uh, and logistics and things. Uh, primary, primary export depends on we've talked about. So to uh, conflict and corruption, the consequences of deep, persistent corruption and civil conflict, uh, as one, one can see in many, many countries, are incredibly costly. Uh, often take decades to overcome. Uh, substantial weaknesses in human capital, basic educational outcomes. And in particular, of course, that huge gap that often exists between mean and expected years of schooling. Uh, many of these countries, the poorest countries in the world, have big savings and foreign exchange gaps. They simply don't have the foreign exchange reserves to be able to, for example, to pay for expensive imports of things like fertiliser and pharmaceuticals. Primary product dependency may well have uh, fast-forwarded and accelerated natural capital depletion in terms of uh, diminution of fish stocks, deforestation and overuse of agricultural land, which often has poor, poor soil quality. In many of these countries, there is a, an enormous gap between those at the top in terms of income and wealth and those right at the bottom. And often there's a lack of competition in markets. Markets tend to be fragmented. You don't have firms competing with each other. You often have local regional monopolies driving prices up and keeping real incomes down. So in this video, we've just basically looked, I just wanted to be aware of which countries are now listed as having the lowest per capita GDPs in the world. 2020 and 2021, very difficult years for these nations. Just having a sense of who those countries are and what some of the barriers are to their development is, I think, a really crucial part of your revision. So hopefully you found that useful. Take care. See you soon. All the best.